Hey everybody, John Peterson here and welcome back to another edition of Which One Works. This is the, I think, 14th episode that I've done of this series. And, and in this series, I really try to show you some of the criteria and thought processes that I go through when I'm evaluating images to process and publish. Because oftentimes there's just little things that make a difference between good and great or acceptable and not acceptable. And so in this series, I'll pick a, uh, a sampling of images and I'll show you, in my opinion, which ones of my images work and which ones don't and why they don't. So I just got back from uh, leading a photo workshop down in the Eastern Sierras to photograph fall color. And so I have a whole bunch of images to look through and to choose which ones I want to process and which ones go in the bin. So let's dive into just a couple of examples of my images from the Eastern Sears and I'll show you what I'm talking about and I'll show you which ones work. Alrighty, as I said, I was in the Eastern Sierras and I was leading a workshop down there to photograph the fall color and we got there just just in time where peak color was just starting to come on. So we had a lot of great yellows, but we also had a little bit of green. Didn't have a lot of orange in the, in the trees yet, but we still had a phenomenal time. So let's go ahead and take a look at this first image. This is a, a waterfall on the road to South Lake. And this was an area we stopped and took our group with. And, and here is a shot that I took that at the time it seemed okay. You know, I'm including the waterfall, I'm including the fall color, and I just took the shot. Well, when I got home and really started looking at it, I didn't like it. And I'll tell you why it doesn't work for me. I've got all of this empty space right at the top of, this, of the frame, really about a third of the frame that doesn't add a lot to this image. But the biggest thing that doesn't work for me is I have, I've got this waterfall on the left and this bright foliage on the right. Which one am I supposed to look at? Is it the waterfall or the foliage? What's the main subject here? And in this composition, it's too hard to tell. I don't know. Because each one of them has equal visual importance in the frame. Because the foliage is brighter, it's going to grab my attention quicker and hold on to it longer than the waterfall. So I tend to think that the foliage is the subject. But the composition doesn't lead me to believe that. So this is one of those where this shot is neither here nor there. I mean, it's a pretty picture. But I'm not clear what the subject of this shot is and where I'm supposed to be putting most of my attention. So here is a way that I think that it works. I zoomed in a little bit tighter. I still have foliage surrounding the waterfall, but I don't have a lot of it. And the waterfall is much larger in the scene. So it's really obvious that my waterfall is the primary subject of this photograph. And oh, by the way, it's in the context of fall foliage around it. And you know what's funny? Just a couple of days later, after a really cold night, the trees had changed dramatically. And so I was able to grab this shot. And again, it's kind of similar to that very first one that we saw where I've got all of this bright foliage and I've got the waterfall. It's not particularly big. I've got some landscape in the upper left corner. But this one works far better than the first shot. And I'll tell you why. Because I have foliage surrounding almost 100% surrounding the waterfall. So it's acting as a frame around my primary subject. So this kind of shot works where this kind of shot doesn't. And I tell you, just a day or two later, and this is what we saw. It was pretty dramatic. We also took the folks up into the ancient bristlecone pine forest up in the White Mountains. And we were fortunate enough to have a few clouds in the sky. And all of this, this little series right here is all going to be in monochrome, black and white. 
and I wanted to just show you a couple of iterations. So this kind of shot, this is maybe the first shot that I took as I was walking up into it. And, you know, I don't like this shot for obvious reasons. I mean, it gives context of this cool old gnarled tree in the context of this vast landscape which is great, but I've got all of this foreground that's not adding a ton of value. I can't see the tree, the details in the tree all that well. I've got a really black sky, which is cool, but, but that's about it. There's not a lot that's really redeeming in this photograph. So if I get closer, ooh, this is getting better. I've still got a really cool sky. I've got some vastness behind the tree. I'm much closer, so the subject is larger in my photograph, which is great. Uh, I can see a lot more of the details. One of the things I don't like in this photograph is how this trunk that has fallen down, so much of it has exited out of the scene and I can't see it. So I've got this leading line that's taking me to the right out of the frame. The other thing I don't really care for is how much this part of the tree merges with the trees in the background. So, you know, this is, it, it's a nice shot, but when I really start picking it apart, I don't really like it all that much. Now, this, this more closely resembles the first shot where I am showing it in a little bit vaster landscape. I've got the black sky. I've got, I'm, I'm a lot closer to the tree so I can see details of it. This leading line that bothered me in the previous shot, it's less of a bother now because I changed the angle a little bit of, of where I am in relation to the tree. So it feels less like a leading line and, and more like a just another element in the photograph. And I also, by, by moving just a little bit, I still included some of these trees to the right, but I'm not in conflict with them. I got some space between these trees and my main subject. You can see right here in the middle, I have some space, some room to breathe. So this is a shot that I think works far better than the previous two. And as a bonus, here's another take on that. I get the vastness of the landscape. I don't get those trees in the midground behind me. I get a beautiful sky. This trunk is a little bit bothersome just because of how bright it is compared to the rest of the tree. But I think I could deal with that in post. So either this shot or this shot work really well for me. Now we took, uh, we took folks out to the Buttermilks, uh, which is uh, real close to Bishop. And uh, we went out and photographed sunrise there one morning looking east, sorry, looking west towards the mountains. And you know, the Buttermilks have all these great rabbit bushes and sage and other types of uh, cool foliage out there. And so, you know, you fumble around in the dark, you try to find a good composition, and then as the sun comes up, you adjust, and it's a really fun place to shoot, and it's beautiful scenery. So here's one of the first shots that I want to take a look at. I've got my foreground is really dominated by these bushes. Midground, I can see a little bit of yellow back there, and of course my background is the mountains and the sky. Um, you know, I don't like this shot as much as the one I'm about to show you. And the reason being is that this, these three bushes act as a bit of a barrier. It's almost like a wall, visually a wall, that is really difficult to get over or around. And so my vision sort of stops right here in the foreground. And even the bright, vibrant yellow that's back here, it's hidden by this bush partially, and it's really difficult to get back there. So this shot, you know, it's nice, it's pleasing, but subconsciously I have a really hard time getting past these bushes in the foreground. So taking that concept of having a strong foreground element, I found this bush. Here, I was able to bring out some of the yellow in this, just for this demonstration. I haven't processed this image yet, but notice the height of the bush here. I'm able to get past the bush and start wandering through the brush into the midground and then to the background. Granted, this bush right here is a little bit of a, a little bit of a visual impediment, but because this is so open over here on the left, I'm able to visually get around this bush and keep traveling 
back into the image. So I think this one works far better than this one. Both are nice shots, but I think this one works better. And you know, fall foliage, high Sierras, there's lots of lakes and beaver ponds. And so we visited several and the light just past sunrise, the light is beautiful. And we spent a lot of time photographing reflections and photographing the warm light on the warm colored leaves. So here's a shot that I took that I really liked. And then this was, a, the, this light only lasted about five minutes until it washed out and just got unshootable. But I shot this frame, and, and this is a reminder to you folks, when you're shooting different compositions, try to shoot them both vertically and horizontally. Sometimes you have subjects that only work one direction, but sometimes shots like this could maybe work both ways. So here's a horizontal version. Here is a vertical version. So vertical, horizontal. And it's really up to you which one works. I like both of them. I like this one because of the proximity of the bushes. They're a lot closer to you. They fill the frame more. It feels more, I feel more of a presence of them. The vertical shot I like, I mean, I'm a little bit farther away from these bushes, but both of these trees are fully resolved both above the water and then in the reflection. So I like this for one quality. I like this one for another quality. Alrighty, folks. Well, there you go. There's another edition of Which One Works, this time from the Eastern Sierras. Hope you enjoyed this. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them down below and I will respond to them. If you stumbled on this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. That stuff always helps me out. And otherwise, have a great day and keep on shooting. Stay tuned for more.